Let's open our Bibles and stand this evening before we begin to worship our Lord. When you know him, when he has done something for you, it's so real. Do you know what I'm talking about? Did you just love to worship him and thank him and praise him? Oh, he's so good tonight. Amen. Let's open to Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. It kind of sounds like this meeting, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of all their distresses. And he led them forth in a right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Praise his wonderful name. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Precious Lord, we come to you this evening in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We feel like the psalmist tonight. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Oh, that they would give glory to your name for all the wonderful things you've done for us, Lord, and that you're doing right now. So, Father, may we uh, set aside this evening, the next few hours, to focus on you, to focus on your word, focus on what you're doing in our hearts right now during this uh, week. And Lord, let me let, help us to just forget everything else that's going on in the outside world and our jobs and our schools and all the pressures of life, you've called a little uh, uh, time for us to come aside, spend a little time with you, Lord. So, Lord, may this be such a precious time to each person here, Lord. I pray that each one will steal away with Jesus. Steal away into that little cave in our hearts, Lord, where you can come and meet with us and speak with us and guide us and lead us and answer those questions of life that we have in our hearts, Lord. May you meet each of these dear young people in a wonderful way, Father. How my heart bleeds for them. How I want them to know that you're so real and that you're so good. You know that I know, Lord. I've been down all kinds of paths, but you're always there to help me. And I'm so thankful today. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, lift up the name of the Lord. Oh, let's give praise unto the Lord. Let's give thanksgiving unto the Lord for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, he satisfies the hungry soul and the longing soul. He'll satisfy you with his goodness and his grace and his kindness tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you and magnify your name. Bless the service and speak through your servant in a special way. We ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. So, amen. Glory to his name. Amen. You know that song? Let's play it just a little faster then, all right? Just a bit. Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Yeah. 
He's calling, lead me, Lord, and I will follow. Oh, yeah, lead me, Lord, and I, I will follow. Oh, you have called me, yes, you One more time, yeah. Lead me, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I will go. You have Brothers are going to bring the plates up for the offering. Let's sing a verse. Shackled by a heavy burden. You know the words? Oh, need the Lord of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus me and now I am no longer the same I am no longer the same tell me why oh he touched me who touched him oh he touched me yes he did
Hallelujah. The blood is coming. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Let's sing a song. You know the song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow? What key would that be? Because He Lives. Same one? Oh, okay. And that's a little low for me, though. <laughs> if you could bump it up a bit. <clears throat> Yeah, it works. That'd be good. Because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Because he lived, because he lived, all fear is gone. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Lord, may it touch each one that's uh, able to give tonight. And those that are not able, may it touch them, Lord, in their uh, places uh, where they live and, and prosper their way, Lord, so they can give to the, the sick and the lonely and, and, and the poor and needy and give to great works like this, Father. Grant it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. My future and life is worth the living just because he lived. Sing the chorus again. Because he lives, because he lived. I can face tomorrow. Oh, yes, I can. Because he lived, oh, fear is gone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We have uh, <clears throat> two prayer requests here. <coughs> Praise God. There's one of them is written in German, so somebody who can speak German and English should be good to translate this. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Well, there's uh, one here from uh, Fabio Giovanni Ferracan, I guess it is, from Bethel. Uh, yes, come there. He says, uh, since 2001, I've been struggling with a tumor. I am still under therapy. Please pray for me that God may grant me complete deliverance. Amen. Praise the Lord. The name is J. Anna. The Lord Jesus Christ knows my need in my heart. In spiritual sense, my hunger and thirst for more. And also the sickness in my, in my body. Okay. Okay. Well, wonderful. Before we bow our heads, <clears throat> I'll just say this. You heard the testimonies from Brother Tim Pruitt just a few hours ago, right? Now that's real. It's very real, and I know it is because a few years ago, <clears throat> my wife um, went in to the doctor for back pain. You know the story, right? Yeah. And uh, they had diagnosed her after an MRI that they took. They said she had a, uh, 
uh, her aorta, the main artery out of the heart, had a separation in it, um, uh, like a, uh, it was breaking open. There's a certain word for it. And uh, it was very urgent. And uh, so the doctor wanted to come, or, come in immediately and have a CAT scan, they call it, so they know how to operate because she could die at any minute. It could break open and she's dead. And uh, so before she went, <laughs> we got down on our knees and we prayed not a long, loud prayer with just a simple prayer in simple faith. And just like Brother Tim did, I took this message for me. I took it for myself. And before I knew what I said, I said, before the doctor's hand touches her, she'll be completely healed. Well, they brought her in. They did the CAT scan. About an hour went by. The doctor called her in. He had two pictures up on the wall. One was before and one was after. He said, this here, you see the line here. He said, that's what the problem was. He said, I don't know what to tell you, ma'am, but it's gone. Oh, he's real. Oh, yes, he's real. Hallelujah. So we've got one tumor here, and we've got a, another illness that we don't know, but Jesus knows. So we know that he's real, and we can pray for these two individuals now. And let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we know you're real. We know that uh, you called this. Uh, conference here, Lord, so that you could come in amongst your people and, and speak to us and demonstrate yourself alive again today. Lord, you've never gone anywhere. You just want us to wake up and realize that you love us and that you're here and that you're here to heal our sicknesses and meet our needs and deliver the captives. So, Father, I lay my unworthy hand on these two prayer requests. Lord, may this tumor be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. And may this other answer come quickly to this saint, Lord, and meet their needs in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We believe it, and we say together, Amen. So be it. Amen. Praise his name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise his wonderful name. I guess this would be the same key. Let's sing um, <clears throat> Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. You know that song? Time is filled with swift transition. Isn't that true? <laughs> the days we are living in. I haven't been on this earth long, but I've been on it long enough to see it go from bad to worse to completely crazy. We live in an insane world. But let me tell you something else before we sing this song. You know, this message that the two brothers have spoken about, that they're so passionate about, you show me any other evangelist, either present or past, who could, who could at 24 years old, tell exact troop movements that was going to happen in a world war that hadn't even happened yet. That was going to happen with the, Imagine, or the Siegfried line and how the Americans were going to be uh, overcome the Germans. And this was going to happen with Mussolini and Hitler. He just came into power, 1933, and said what was going to happen in the next decade or two. Tell me, who else can do that? He did it. That's who did it. And then, he's, and then he says... And then, as it goes on, technology will get to a place till they have cars that are operated by some other power that need no driver. That's now. And they have to implement it because the cities are too crowded. It wasn't necessary before. Now it is. And then he saw a great uh, a woman rise in great power in the United States. Do I have to draw you a picture? Do we have to put her picture up there? Well, tell me. This is, he was 24. This is 1933. That's a prophet. That's Elijah. Hey, Amen.
Hallelujah. That separates him from all the others. That and the fact that God followed that ministry with miracles and signs and wonders that all those other evangelists still talk about, Benny Ann and the rest of them, they still talk about what happened with Brother Branham, but they can't grasp it because it's not for them. It's for you, little bride. He loves you. Oh, my. Hallelujah. So we're going to hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. You got the words up there? Oh, uh, is that the key? Yeah. Hold to God's unchanging hand. We're singing, hold to God's unchanging hand. Oh, filled your hopes on things eternal. Uh, hold to God's unchanging hand. Time, oh yeah, time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth unmoved can stand. Oh, build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, we gotta hold to God unchanging hand. Oh, little children, hold to God. This world's vain riches come. Fit not this world's vain riches. Hallelujah. Oh, that so rapidly decay. Oh, see to gain the heavenly treasure. Oh, because they will never pass away. Is our brother ready yet? If not, I'll go into another song. I don't see him yet. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. When the brother uh, was speaking um, uh, this morning, when uh, Brother Biscoe was talking about the soldier that got delivered, when he said that, a song just exploded in my mind that I had heard, and I'd never sung it or anything, and I mentioned it, and a few of the brothers had heard it before. Can you give me a key for it, Dan? And uh, some of you young people will have probably heard it. You know, it's in some of the 
Christian radio stations and stuff. But it just, it, when he talked about him coming out saying, I'm free, it just all of a sudden, I could hear the song. So I thought maybe it was supposed to be sung, you know. So I'll, I'll sing the verses, and those of you who know it, just sing along. If not, that's fine. But the chorus is so simple, you know. We'll, we'll all catch it up together. And uh, so it goes something like this. It says, you unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. Of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Right? I am a child of God. Let's sing the chorus right now. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Hallelujah. Oh, I am a child of God. Shall we lift up our hands? Let's give God some praise and worship tonight. Lift up your voices. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voices. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen, and amen. Glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I want to be mindful not to forget the translators. Praise God. It feels so good to be in the house of the Lord. I, I feel so humble. And I feel so privileged to witness men still alive that walked with the prophet, that walked in an age that we all aspire to be in, the age of adoption. One man that was, that had an angel working with him. And um, to be privileged to be in that age and to see all that, that in itself is amazing. And I think in these meetings, it's a blessing that we can go back down memory lane and bring back all the things that God did in the prophet. And um, all these brothers, their testimonies has just blown my heart away. Amen? And um, opportune to see what God did in one man. But they themselves at that time can't partake of those experiences. Because we were all predestinated to partake of those experiences at a time like this. The same experience Malachi for had. Because he gave us a promise that we shall meet that same angel. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. If that's your promise, then say amen to that tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. And he gave us precious promises revealed from the word. From the back of the book. And that by these promises, we can become partakers of these nature experiences. And those experiences is what it would take to transform us into the image of his son, which qualifies us for the rapture. Hallelujah. So I feel good tonight that I can witness living voices that saw God walked on two feet in this age. If that's how you feel tonight, then say amen tonight. Amen. If you feel that way tonight, give a God a shout of amen. It's a privilege. Living voices that can still give a testimony 
that God Elohim visited our generation. And there was a wave shift over all of us that one day we shall come to the same spot where we can partake of that divine nature. We can partake of that God. We can partake of his nature, of his blessing, of his works, of his power. For the prophet said, the things you see in me temporarily will become permanent in the bride. So I want to thank Brother Colin Brenner for his boldness of faith to call these meetings. He's really bold enough to call these meetings. And I believe God has an agenda for these meetings. God had a purpose for these meetings. Hallelujah. Amen. So Brother Colin Brenner, I appreciate you very much. May God bless your effort. And may God water the desires of your hearts. We love you. I've always appreciated you. May God bless you and your lovely wife and your church. Praise God. I want to greet all the convention on behalf of my wife, Sister Sarah, and the little church back home in Freetown. We are privileged to be in these meetings and to see beautiful ministers to hear God's servant speak. We are blessed. I was blessed since last night to hear all the ministers give their expectations. It was amazing. We thought we knew it all. But praise God, God has a bride around the world. Like Brother Theo said, this bride is not, this bride is not a French bride. It's not an English bride, a German bride. It's a universal bride. It's a bride across the globe. Amen. And we are not in this bride based on association. No group puts you into this bride. There's only one way to get you to the bride. It's by one Holy Spirit. By one spirit, are we all baptized into one body? Glory to God, hallelujah. And my expectation tonight, that God by his grace will baptize some people tonight into that body. Because once you are in that body, no man can take you out. Once you are in that body, no demon can take you out. That's the place you are ordained to be. Praise God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what shall we say this morning about Brother Eddie Biskel? Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Biskel, I appreciate you very much. Try to present the body. And Christ had to come through the volume of the book. And Christ, for this day, had to walk through that same body. And how he brought it beautifully, making you see you are part of that body. And because you are part of the body, you have something to supply in that body. That was beautiful. And for this afternoon, for the team, such a fiery preacher. Praise God, hallelujah. Well, tonight is on my lot. I want to say some few things. I'll take my time to speak because that's the audience we have. Hallelujah. I have a little thought for tonight. I won't be long, God willing. My little thought tonight. Let's stand to our feet. Let's turn to Genesis 1, 26. And the Romans 8. A little thought. Predestinated to be conformed into the image of his son. That's my title for tonight. Predestinated to be conformed into the image of his son. That's why we are here. This is not a church. This is a bride. Amen. So Genesis 1 to 6. Glory to God. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the, the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth. 
and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Romans chapter 8. Glory. Romans 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did for know he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That is your predestination. That is what you are predestined to become. At the end of it all, you are ordained to become just like Jesus, to be conforming to his image. And you have to believe that. Amen. Because seventh thunder gives you faith to believe you can become like Jesus. Amen. Then say amen to that tonight. Amen. Somebody say amen to that tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. That's what the scripture says. For whom he did foreknow, he also did praise. He need to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Amen. Let's bow our heads down to word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for tonight. We are not out of cause, out of purpose. You ordain us to be here. Let your purpose be made known tonight. Father, I pray that you just take me out of the way. And speak, speak it, spoken words into the hearts of your people. Lord, they've not gathered just for gathering. They came that they might see Jesus. Lord, we are such, we are so caught in such a tremendous time like this. And Lord, we have one need and that need is the Lord Jesus Christ. Manifest yourself in our heart, Lord Jesus. Pray for the young people tonight. You know, God, the things they're going through, we can deliver them. We can only present you to them. Make yourself real to them tonight. I pray, God, that you open up the heavens and pour down the Holy Spirit and baptize, Lord, even the Caleb's who have not received the Holy Spirit yet. Those with the Holy Ghost, I ask for refillings, God, tonight. Those without, may you seal them, dear Jesus Christ, into this body. Give us the satisfaction guarantee that we shall know that indeed we are sons of God. We thank you, Father, for tonight. Bless the words that proceeds out of my mouth. We thank you for all. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, Amen. and the people say, Amen. you may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, somebody say, Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen means so be it. One more time, let's say amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Well, for tonight, I want to find a way to see how I could bring forth your word for tonight. We have promises in this Bible. And like it was in Genesis, God spoke the heavens and spoke the earth. And right beneath the earth, there were seeds. All kinds of seeds. Reptiles, mammalian seeds, serpent seeds, all those seeds were on the earth. But you see, it took the brooding of the spirit until the Holy Spirit broods over the earth. Hallelujah. Those spirit life remain hidden. Oh. Say amen. Yeah. That means the Holy Ghost had to come down, brood over the earth. But as he was brooding, life, spirit were coming out, responding to the brooding. But God on the back part of his mind, he had an intention. He had an image on the back of his mind. 
So he kept brooding. He kept brooding. Reptilian life showed up. Animal life showed up. Marine life showed up. All kinds of life showed up. But he kept brooding. Because he was going towards what was on the back part of his mind. Because on the back part of his mind, he had an image. He had an intention for doing the brooding. So he kept brooding until finally, something came out of the earth that looked dust like the one that was doing the brooding. Then God stopped. Can somebody say amen to that church? And that is why in these meetings, we can come into these meetings without the Holy Spirit brooding over you. Because you sit here tonight with all kinds of seeds. All kinds of spirit in our minds, in our flesh. But as the Holy Spirit keeps brooding, not, it doesn't only expose those spirit, bring them out, but God keeps going deeper. Because deep inside of you is a seed. A seed of God that lives deep inside the socket of your soul. And that's the thing that God is trying to reach. See, the Pentecostals, they can bring forth deliverance. I've seen that in my church and in many meetings. The Holy Spirit falls. I've seen the Holy Spirit falls in meetings. I've seen people crawling with their tongue coming out. They crawl on the floor like snakes. I've also seen the Holy Ghost fall in a meeting in my church. And I've seen people bark like dogs. See, these are spirits. But as the Holy Ghost comes upon the church, those spirits cannot hide anymore. Because the Holy Ghost exposes all those spirits. All the church spirits. These cold fanatical spirits. Religious spirits that are hiding in the message. When the Holy Ghost begins to brood, all those spirits showed up. Hallelujah. But those spirits is not you. No, those spirits is not you. You are more than those spirits. Because deep inside of you, God by the Holy Ghost is trying to reach that seed of God that he placed inside of you. That is his intention. Let somebody shout hallelujah. God sent a prophet and but the Branham had the logos of Elohim. This Bible that you see is a book of life. It's a book of seeds. All kinds of seeds lays in this Bible. Bram said, all the religions you see today, they all have a seed in here. And God sent a prophet by the Holy Ghost. He began to brood over the world. Since 1947, three pools brooding. As he kept brooding, all kinds of seeds, spirits showed up. Even the hidden seeds, like the serpent seed, showed up. Because the serpent seed itself was in here, but it was hidden. But as he kept brooding, all those spirits, all those lives showed up. But on the back part of God's mind, God had an image on the back of his mind. He was trying to see if you could have somebody that can become like Jesus. And when Malachi 4 came to his third pole, let somebody say amen. In the midst of the revelation of the serpent seed, the church spirit showed up. False anointed spirits all showed up. All kinds of spirits showed up in the days of the prophet. But God kept brooding. God kept brooding until 1963. When he hit the third pole, a man showed up. His name is William Marion Branham. A man that was a perfect reflection of Jesus Christ. But Branham was so much like Jesus. All the people missed him for Jesus. A perfect image that stood on the earth. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to know. Hallelujah. That that is your promise tonight. God's intention for the brooding since 1946 was achieved. When one man showed up, 
There was nothing less than God on the earth. But the Branham had to understand the difficulty separating him from the Son of Man. In future home, he said, that's where they get the whole thing confused. Because he was a Son of Man, revealing thee. But it shows that he was so much in unity with God. He was so much in oneness with God. God took his form. God wore tie. God put on shoes. The prophet stood there. It was God incarnated. Oh, I feel so religious tonight. I feel so excited tonight. God made flesh. That is your promise tonight. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't let no preacher take this away from you. Don't let no church membership take this away from you. That is your promise to become like Jesus. You shall be perfect. You shall be like your father. You shall be like God. If you feel that way tonight, then shout hallelujah. Let me see that. So, but the pranam was a perfect reflection of Jesus Christ. And God had to wave him in the midst of all the revelation of the serpent seed. So that is your focus. So but the pranam was an image of God that came from the back part of God's mind. He was not the serpent seed. He was not your church spirit. But you will reveal all that. And God stopped brooding when God saw a man that was exactly like himself. Why can't we feel good tonight? You heard what the Episcopal said. All they could let you see here was to see how God walked in one man. How one, one man was so much in unity with God. He was so much in oneness with God. Hallelujah! Until he could be misunderstood for God. People literally worship with the pranam. He had to deny it. That I am not the son of man. I am only a son of man. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, that's how I feel tonight. I feel tonight I can become like Jesus. That sounds like a hard thing to say. So we don't see just Malachi for as a prophet. The only man for our age, in all ages, that attained perfection. Letting you see what was God's intention in Genesis. That was his intention of creating Adam. When it came to Adam, who was he? It was a reflection of God. And Satan came and marked the image. But God cannot fail. He gave a promise. I will restore. I'll bring it back. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I mean, this is good stuff. This stuff should make somebody shout. This stuff should make somebody feel happy. Hallelujah. This is not church. I presume this is pride. These are people that are making themselves ready for the rapture. These are people in whose heart is to want to be like Jesus. That's the bride, not the church. Where you pay your tithes and pay your offerings. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. But in your heart, do you want to become like Jesus? In your heart, do you have faith you can become like Jesus? In your heart, do you believe you can become one with God? You don't say amen too well. No, you are not saying amen too well. If you don't say amen, then I cannot preach. Because I must preach and you say amen. The prophet said, when you say amen, you water the words. 
as she watch at the word, the Holy Ghost comes down and pour the anointing upon that word. So let somebody say, Amen. Because this is your message. This is your name. This is your life. This is why you are here. You are not here to just be in a convention. You are here to know what is your next plan in God. After you leave here, what is your next hope? What are you living for? Why all this sacrifice? Pay all your money to come to a convention. Not to be an onlooker or an observer. But to be given faith. That once you leave this convention, you're going back to your country. You shall become like Jesus. You shall become like God. Hallelujah. Satan might not like this. He does not like this message. But this is your message. This is your life. Hallelujah, praise God. Let me see that. That's why you see, when you go through all Malachi 4's message, all kinds of spirit. Look at the message today, all kinds of spirit. And people can use any code to justify anything. Because he revealed all the mysteries. He revealed all the hidden life that's in this Bible. But what is your life? And what you preach in your church, that's the life you put into your people. If you preach the word image, that's what you will have in your church. If you preach serpent seed, that's what they will get. But it's all in here. But God's intention for brooding was not to get a serpent seed. Because God brooded past the serpent seed. There's more yet to it. And we shall come to it. Because that is your promise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the message today, we have a challenge. A very serious challenge. And our challenge is, how do we put the word and the spirit together? That's my challenge. Because Malachi 4 presented four steps. Justification, sanctification, after the Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost itself. But God don't have four steps. God has actually three steps. Because the early church had three steps. Justified, sanctified, and the Holy Ghost came with power. No four steps. They had the word and they had the spirit. When they preach, Holy Spirit falls. They don't preach and wait for a year later for the Holy Ghost to fall. They had the word and the spirit together. Amen. That's the church. Down through the seven church ages, that was broken apart. God was separated. St. John 1 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. And the word there means Logos. So the Logos was with Elohim, and the Logos was Elohim. You can break that. God and his word are one. And what became flesh. Can somebody say amen to that church? And St. John 4.24 says, God is a spirit. So God is not just word, but God is also spirit. So to emphasize God as the word, is breaking God into parts. And that's what went wrong in seven church ages. Separating the word from the spirit. And each group makes emphasis on what they have. They don't like no spirit, no shouting, no hallelujah, no signs, no wonders. In the message, it's all Pentecost. We have put away all the spirits. 
because it's word, 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 word. But the word can deliver you. The word alone can set you free. The word alone can change you. You need the word and the spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. So to the end of the message is the word. If you preach signs and wonders, it's Pentecost. But just hear what the Pisca said this morning. That's not Pentecost. That was God in flesh. That was Jesus on the earth. You can fool me this hour. The book has been opened. You have seen your name. You know exactly who you are. You see, so we made the same mistake that was made down through seven church ages. Breaking God into pieces. Making God three. Making God four. Making God five. But here you are Israel. The Lord thy God is one God. And Malachi 4 came back to bring that unity between God and his words. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah? The word and the spirit. That's how you are born. That's how you are delivered. I can preach all this word to you. But if the spirit doesn't come on it, you can't be delivered. Because the spirit gives life to the words. The spirit activates the word. The spirit makes the word move. Hallelujah. Let me see there. So in this age, we can't have four. That means when we come to the third step, it must be word and spirit together again. Like they had it in the early church. So Malachi 4 had to bring the word after Pentecost. Because Pentecost had the Holy Spirit. But no word. And that's only produced false anointed ones. Because the Holy Ghost came, there was no seed word on the inside. So they spoke in tongues, all kinds of life, signs, wonders, but still no word. So God sent a prophet to restore back the word as the fourth line word, connecting back the word to the spirit. So as we sit here now, by the time you leave here tonight, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. You shall feel God in power. Experience his spirit in your soul. And you shall be changed. Hallelujah. You shall become another man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 And the prophet said what we have done today. We have made too much stress. On the mechanics. So it's, so it's the stress you make. What you stress is what you have. We have put too much stress on the mechanics. But the mechanics without dynamics is no good. It takes dynamics to prove whether it's gasoline. Because the gasoline can be in the gasoline can. Maybe it's water. So put fire on it. Then you can tell whether it's gasoline or whether it's water. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the gasoline word has been poured into you all these years. Pure gasoline word. Now God can release fire to connect with the gasoline word and light you up for your age. You become a light for this age. A light for your generation. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Oh, somebody say hallelujah. So we can go back to four steps. Because Malachi for restored the word. Now it's justification. Sanctification. Much of the Holy Ghost. Then on your baptism, you are back to word and spirit. Amen. That means when we come to the third pool, which is our pool. Is word and spirit. It would take a fivefold ministry to do that. It would take Jesus, who take his word and take his spirit and put it together. 
No man can do that. We can preach the word, but God will list the spirit. We preach the word, but God will list corresponding power. So it will take God and a faithful ministry to take his word and his spirit and put it together and bless the church. Hallelujah, praise God. So Brother John cannot do that. Brother Eddie cannot do that. It will take God himself to do that. That is why we all must pray that God send forth his ministry. Because you have promised a ministry of Jesus Christ. That ministry is for your perfection. It is not about a man. It's about Jesus. Christ himself coming down to perfect you. By his word and by his spirit. The word and the spirit makes up the Holy Ghost itself. The Holy Ghost is incomplete without word, without spirit. So the Holy Ghost itself, that's your perfection. That's your Joseph. Word and spirit together. Until we have that, we're going nowhere. And that is what we must contend for. So in these meetings, you can't come here. This is almost 50 years after Malachi 4 is gone. Our understanding ought to be opened by now. You come into these meetings looking for what? No prayer. No dedication. No worship. Looking for what? Looking for a statue of a man to speak to you. That must change. This is 50 years. We should come to meeting like this with a prayerful heart. Not to see a man. Not to hear from a man. But to see God in flesh. The world taking on flesh. That is how the church ought to be. That is what these conventions ought to be. We've attended conventions after conventions. It's the same routine. To the conventions are mere routine. That's the truth. Come to conventions, occupy a seat and be an onlooker. What are you hearing now that you have not had before? You've had all this. What you have not had and seen is the Holy Spirit. That is what we all need now. Let's stand for a few minutes. Stand to your feet for a few minutes. Lift up your hands and cry to God for a few minutes. Close your eyes. I'll give you 10 minutes. Just cry to God today for the Holy Spirit. Everybody in this audience, lift up your voice to God. No man can do this. No man can do this. It must be an act of the Holy Ghost. This is what I expect in a convention. All of us prayed up. We come to conventions prayed up. Lord, send the fire. Lord, bring down the Holy Ghost. Manifest your power. That is what makes a convention. We have heard all the word, word after word, word after word. Where is the God of Elijah? Where is the same God that was in the prophet? Cry out tonight. God must find a group. It can be your group, but God must find the people with a revelation. And people to whom the world is open. Oh God. Oh God. But as Zygmunt's burden 
was to dedicate these meetings to prayer. Because we have heard all the word. The food value has been poured into you. The book of life has been opened unto you. So you know exactly who you are. You know exactly what you're supposed to become. Because the book of life has been opened. You are not deceived. You know who you are. I'm a child of God. I came from God. I'm going back to God. Pray. Pray. I did come to preach to you. I came to anoint your faith. Let's use this few moments and ask God. The same God of William Mario Branham. Let that God show up. Let that God come on the scene. Let me see that. Let me see that. When I'm talking to you tonight, I'm not really preaching. I was in Trinidad. And I felt a strong voice in my heart that God is changing the season. God is looking for people. I'm going to pay three or four. Real God called people to whom this book is open to. Because if this book is closed, you don't even know who you are, you can't pray. When Christ came to the resurrection ministry for 40 days, what he did? He opened their understanding to understand the scriptures. But it was scriptures concerning himself. So they said themselves, in that same reflection. He gave them promises. He breathed on them. They returned to the upper room. What are they doing? It was 10 days of prayer, supplication. That's how you tell when the book opens to a man. If the book is open to you, it will change your life. Because I am not going to set you down for anything less than that word image. I left my Pentecostal church not to be under the church member. Hallelujah. I came into this message to have all that was in the prophet. Amen. All I'm after, I must have all that was in Malachi 4. Or I will not stop preaching this way. I will not stop crying to God. I will not stop praying until all that was in Malachi 4 is poured into me. That's why I'm here today. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. I'm an eagle son of God. I will not rest. And we shall not rest. Until we see the same God. In that Elijah come back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall not stop. We shall not cease. Until the same God. Because this age has no hope. If that God doesn't show up. Before God took Elijah off the scene, God made sure he left Elijah a successor. What could that age be like if there was no Elijah? If there was no one man that saw the need to take back what Elijah had to save that age. This age has no hope. Your family, your loved ones, look at all the young people. What have they had? We have told them almost all. But their desire is to see God taking on skin. That can't come by sitting there and you can't even say amen. It can't come that way. It can't come by you not even praying. It can only come like it came in the early church. They were locked up in the upper room. They spent time with God. They did their own assignments their own homework and God saw that and God sent fire let somebody shout hallelujah God must find that same group 
God must find those same people. When I walk into an audience, I can tell you if the book is open to that audience. An audience with no amens, no zeal, no crime. That's how you tell the book is closed. America will soon have a woman president. Malachi 4 gave that to us as an end time sign. Before the annihilation. That is almost less than 100 years from now. A woman will become president of America. What does that mean to the bride? Woman as a prime minister now in London. In Germany. Women taking over the seat of power. When that works, the tightening comes in. World Church Council. Who are they coming after? You. To destroy that word image in you. Thank you, Jesus. Like it was in the early church. When the council that they knew that Christ was to be formed in this man, they came against them. And the scriptures said they were locked up in the upper room for fear of the Jews. We are back on the same thing again. But God, by his grace, has opened the book to us. Brother, I sense the squeeze is coming on. Can somebody say amen to that, church? I sense the squeeze is coming on. This is time to unite with the world. Get closer with God. Hallelujah. Give your last breath. Say, God, I've got to get out of here. I've got to go. My home is a future home. Jesus has a future home for you. Hallelujah. That's your promise. This is serious. That is serious. And Jesus said, watch and pray. So that they don't take you on a wheels. That's why we are privileged to have received a prophet. And we must not take it for granted. You're bringing this message. It's a privilege. It's the grace of God. Don't take it for granted. It makes you humble. It makes you cry out. It makes you cry say, God. This is how it should be after 50 years. This is what I expect in conventions. It has to change. We came from Ivy Coast. I told the Paul, brother, get your audience prepared. But Branham said, no matter how the preacher is furnished, if the audience is not furnished, nothing happens. No matter how the audience is furnished, if the preacher is not furnished, nothing happens. Look, God had always had Moses in his hand. But he had to wait for the people to cry. He gave them a promise. They came to a season. The book was open to only a family. Jokibed and Amram. They saw through that book for their day. And they knew they are not mud dubbers. They took their promise and spent time on God. And God sent a deliverer for them. And when God met Moses, what did God say? He said, I have heard the groanings of my people. We can't change that. That has to be a setting for dynamics. Let somebody shout hallelujah. That must be a setting for dynamics. All the pastors in this church, in this convention, go back home. Stir up your people. Because the time is almost late. Hallelujah. We are about going home. I don't want to stay here. I want to go home. The rapture train is on. Hallelujah. I'm on my way to the rapture. This is serious. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, what are you waiting for? 
waiting for some men. No man can give you that. A man can preach that to you. But God gave you to the inside. That seed must not begin to cry back to God. Let me see that. God will always respond to a desperate soul. These messages, we are meant to bring us all up to a state of desperation. Because we have had it all. We need God on skin. We need God on skin. But it can't come in this atmosphere. No. No. So don't tell me, well, but the content, I'm a German. You are not a German. Oh, but the content, we are Europeans. You are not an European. The devil lied to you. Where was thou when the morning stars sang together? And the sons of God shouted for joy. That's where you come from. You are not from here. So don't you tell me that. You are not a German. You came from heaven. Hallelujah. You came from there when the seventh thunder revival was going on. You were there. The devil lied to you. Your identity is misrepresented. I am not from Africa. Oh, hallelujah. Because I am greater. I am bigger than Africa. My God, my Father is the creator of the universe. I came from God and I'm going back to God. I am not a Nigerian. I am not come from Frita. I came from God. That is your identity. The Bible said, we are pilgrims and the strangers. We are citizens of a higher kingdom. So begin to behave like the country of your rebirth. Don't behave like a German. Don't behave like a European. You are bigger than that. Glory to God, hallelujah. I feel so excited tonight. I feel God can explode in this place and bless his people. Let me see that. That's right. And God must send some minister to call those people out. National spirit. European spirit. German spirit. African spirit. That not who you are. God sent you an entire messenger. He opened the book and he told you, your name is in that eternal section. In that section, there is nothing against you. In that section, you are just like Jesus. That's what he told you. And he gave you seven thunders. You young people, you young people, God made no mistake when he called you in this age. There is a power in you that can live above your sin. Listen, I told my young folks back home that Satan, as we define who a youth is, oh, I'm a young man. So as a young man, you must dress immorally because you are still young. You see, that's how you define who a youth is. But God didn't design like that. Because your strength is in your youth. God expected to even serve him in the days of your youth. There's power in the youth. But your mindset has to change. When you think, because I'm young, I ought to be doing this. Because I'm young. No, that's wrong. 
your mindset must change because God made no mistake when he called you at this age. God saw you. You're on the back part of his mind. He knew you shall come into this age. He put a seed in you. Hallelujah. A seed of perfection. You shall be perfect. In the face of the devil, all this evil spirit, you shall be perfect. You begin to think like that. Walk like that. Let me see that. Hallelujah. Listen, my Bible says, you can't repent of Adam's sin. You can't. <laughs> Paul says, if I do the things I hate, that's right. Then Paul says, it's no more I that do it. But sin, that's Adam's sin. You don't repent of unbelief. Unbelief has to be casted out. <laughs> Bible says repentance is a change of mind. Sometimes our mind change. But the heart still is not changed. Because the snake is still there. So when you tell a lie, your mind changed and I've told a lie. You come and repent of that lie. But give yourself a few more days, you do it again. In your mind, you are changed. But the snake that makes you lie is still there. That was Adam's sin. That's the Adamic nature. You can't repent of that. You need fire to chase that demon out of your soul. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah! And Malachi 4 explained to you in future home. God will send down the fire and the Holy Ghost to burn that snake inside. So you can't set you down just by word. You need the Holy Ghost fire to chase that demon out. And if you're here tonight with a demon in you, by the time you live here, by the time you live here, you're going back free. The repentance you make in your mind can be worked out from your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Many of us are struggling. In our minds, we repent every day. But we still can't stop doing the things we're doing. Because you know why? It's a subconscious thing. That atomic nature has to be handled by God. That means your will is under control of another power. Then you need a greater power to deliver you. And what we have led in this message, deliverance. No deliverance, just word, word, word. But it is coming tonight. Amen. By the time you live here tonight, you're going back as a free brother, as a free sister. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand to our feet tonight. Amen. Everybody stand up. Musicians come forward. Lift up your voices right now because the Holy Ghost is coming down. Lift up your voices. You young people, come on. Young people, come on. The Holy Ghost is coming down. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voices. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voices and cry out. Pray for me softly. Play softly. Don't you stop. Don't you stop. Young man, close your eyes. I said close your eyes because demon powers are going to lead you tonight the powers of darkness will lead you tonight let it rain yes Lord yes Lord The 
God image is coming out. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. The Holy Ghost is here. The Spirit of God is here right now. The angel is here right now. Jesus is here right now. We take authority. Take authority. Take authority. in your life the Holy oh, Ghost is here right now the, the Holy Ghost is here right now you oh, can be filled right rain. now oh let it rain Lord. every disease tonight every creepy thing tonight I command you right now to leave Authority of the living God is in the house. The authority of the living God is in the house. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh worship him. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. Forget about who's around you. Forget about who is in front of you. Forget about who is behind you. You just worship him tonight. Forget about everything. Leave it all behind you tonight. And cry out. Cry out to the Lord. 
Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Take me past the end to the holy place, past the praise and altar. Lord, I want to see your face. Take me past the crowd of people and the priests who sing their praise. Lord, I hunger and thirst for righteousness, but it's only found one place. Take me in to the holies of holies. Take me in by the blood of the land take me in to the home of holy take the cold cleanse my lips here I am oh take me to the holy holy Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, take me in to the holy, holy. Take the cold, cleanse my lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here tonight. I feel Him. I feel Him tonight. He is in this place. He is here right now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Mm. Oh. Mm. oh Jesus. Yes, yes, don't look at me. Don't look at me tonight. I can't save you, but he can. I can't deliver you, but there is a man tonight. His name is Jesus, and he can set you free tonight. He can give you what you need tonight. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Tonight, the Holy Spirit has spoken to our hearts. I know it is because I feel Him. I know what I feel. Tonight, if you want to come to the altar, if you want to receive God's Spirit tonight, you can come tonight. There is a fountain, God bless you sister, there is a fountain filled with blood, filled with blood. Filled with blood. If you hear his voice tonight, why don't you come? Don't wait, just come. This may be your only moment. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. 
don't wait for tomorrow do something now about the anointing that is in this place tonight God sees your heart tonight and if you know you need to make something right with God make it right tonight God bless you sister God bless you you can come to the altar you can pray there is still a chance for you tonight oh hallelujah there is still a chance tonight hallelujah it you just enter in tonight you just enter in tonight the Holy Spirit is here you cry out tonight oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus fill me Lord fill me with your Holy Spirit Fill me with your power. Fill me with your love. That's my prayer tonight. Oh, how we long to worship you. Just worship him. Worship him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Oh, just enter in tonight. Oh, hallelujah. 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 With blood that's drawn from Emmanuel's dream, where sinners plunged beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stain. Rejoice to see that 
church it's got to come to life and death the prophet said to what we need is a breaking up hallelujah we need a breaking up and message after message after message he said the only ones that are going in are those that are sigh and cry for the abominations that are done in the church that are done in the city and we see abominations at every turn we see it in the streets. We see it in the church. We've seen it in pulpits. And we've got to sigh and cry to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire because that's the token. That's the only thing he will recognize because, friends, this is the midnight hour. This is the end. This is no more time. Every sign is so open, we'd have to be blind not to see it. But you're not Laodicea. You are the blind bride of Jesus Christ tonight. You're not blind. You're not miserable. You're not poor. You're not wretched. You see the word being made manifest. And God has called you. Young people, God wants to see you filled with the Holy Ghost. Young sister, young brother, he wants you filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit of God. These demonic spirits in the streets, amen, trying to take over our sons and our daughters. We're going to stand in the breach tonight. Right, parents? We're going to stand in the breach for our young people. Amen. These demonic spirits in school and at work trying to take over their lives. Don't you see that soldier that the brother talked about? That was one of those end time spirits that had him. He had a beautiful family and a wife and children, but it was a homosexual spirit that was making him do things that he shouldn't be doing. But that demon got exposed. And that's one of the spirits of the last days that's going to be cast out of everybody. Whoever's got that in here tonight, you talk to Jesus. Let him cast that demon out of you. We're fighting a real devil in here. He's not playing games and neither are we. We love you. God loves you. Young people, God loves you. Amen. But we know the hard times you have in school and everything and the way the teachers make fun of you and the, and the kids in the school make fun of you i know i've seen what my children had to go through and we love you and we're pulling for you and praying for you the god is here to fill you with the higher power the holy ghost is here he loves you he wants to fill you with himself hallelujah call out to him just talk to him He's real. He's so real tonight. Wash all, wash all my sins away. Oh, yeah. And there may I go vile as he wash all my sins away. Since thy 
faith I saw that stream I flow wing wounds of life redeeming love some ministers maybe come and pray with some of these souls at the altar here they're seeking God they probably want to have someone pray with them for a bit amen isn't he lovely tonight I believe that God sent our brother in here with a message to stir the bride to shake us up amen we're, this is the end of the world. Don't think this is going to go on and on and on. We're facing the end here. We got to stop playing church. Amen. We got to mean business with God. Hallelujah. I've seen enough of playing church in my life that I never want to do it again. I've seen it. I know what it is. And it's a deceiving spirit. It's a Laodicean spirit for the last days. Play in church. That's why that prophet cried out. Amen. We've got to sigh and cry against these things that are going on. We don't want to see. You want to see your brother or sister in torment? I don't. I want to see them in gl enjoying the glory of heaven. As soon as we can get our eyes off of the world and different things and get our eyes on heaven and get a burden for somebody else and start praying for each other, amen, it's got to take prayer, serious prayer. Oh God, I'm so short of it. I'll confess that to you right now myself. I'm short of it. I need more. I need to be more sincere with God. I need to be more sincere with Him, with you. I got to be more honest, more truthful. Hallelujah. God's spirit will not always strive with man. His patience is just about run out. But I'm so glad that he's had patience with me. I'm so glad that he's been waiting. I'm so glad that he didn't come so many years ago, but that he's waiting, waiting. Perhaps, per adventure, there be five. Per, per adventure, there be a few more. So God is calling, young person. He loves you tonight. He loves you people at the altar here. He loves you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So 
Let's give him some praise tonight before we go. Amen. Thank you. Isn't he wonderful? Sing it. He raised up heaven above with, with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome. Our God is an awesome God. Oh, our God, our God is, is an awesome, awesome God. God. He reigns he from heaven above with, with, with wisdom, power, and love. Our God, God is an awesome God. God. Oh, yes. our, God our God is an awesome God. God. He reigns he from, from heaven above with, with, with wisdom, power, and love.
Come on, come on. He reigns. Oh, tell somebody. Turn around, shake hands with your brother. God is an awesome God. Turn around, tell yes. someone. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. With wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Yes. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. The power of love, God is an awesome God. Oh, God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with you. Some power of love, our God is an awesome God. Oh, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with some power and love. God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, Lord. Oh, praise his wonderful name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We'll do this one more song and then and then we'll go. Amen. Uh, uh, the buses, those who will be taking the buses out, you've, you've got an hour. They they leave at 1030, all right, just so you know. <clears throat> Praise God. So let's let's go back to the one we were starting at. You know, just to go off with a little shout of praise because your sons and daughters of God. Amen. Didn't you appreciate the word, the message that came tonight to tell you, amen, you are predestinated. The Bible says you are predestinated to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. And daily we fail, but that's, he's not looking at that. He's looking at the image of his son. The blood of Jesus Christ is over you. Amen. You're clean by the blood today. Amen. So you're sons and daughters of God. Right now, now are we the sons of God. Hallelujah. You believe that tonight? Amen. It goes, you unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. Of deliverance, hallelujah, from my enemies. Till all my fears are gone. Till all my fears are gone. <laughs> and I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Uh, I am a child of God. You're predestinated from my mother's womb. You have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again, yes, Lord, into a family. Your blood flows through my veins. Amen. Oh, I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. Amen. Let's get that fear out. I'm no, I'm no longer, longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. Let's say I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Glory. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. I am a child of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. 
just end it right there for tonight. I don't want to go long. Amen. I'm so thankful for the message that was brought tonight. Amen, friends. Amen. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The, the bus starts tomorrow morning at the Comfort Hotel at uh, 7.30. So just so you know, when the bus is making its rounds. And uh, for the service tomorrow, uh, let's see, the doors will open uh, for prayer at 9 a.m. And uh, worship will start at 9.30. Amen. So uh, you want to be ready for that. Don't want to stay out too late tonight. Amen. But uh, if you want to spend your night in prayer, nobody's going to stop you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here's some more. All right. Thank you, Brother Levin. All right. All right. So it says, we ask all the believers staying in the Hotel Comfort and Hotel Oxen to pay their bills by tomorrow morning before the breakfast. And uh, the morning uh, shuttle uh, will depart at 7.30 from the Comfort Hotel. And at 7.50, 10 minutes to 8, it will be at the Institute Hotel. All right, so you know what you're doing tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Wow. Praise God. What a blessed time. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise His holy name. Let's just bow our heads now. Almighty Father, we're so thankful for this precious message which has revealed the contents of the Bible. And in there we see our name in that book, Lord. When it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. I put my name in there. My name is in there. For God so loved Paul Griffin. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that you gave your son for me, Lord. That if I believe in you, Lord, I'll not perish, but I'll have eternal life. That scripture, Lord, we know it has enough power, Lord, to save or condemn the whole world. So, Father, we cling to your word this evening with everything that's in us, Lord. We thank you for showing us, Lord, that we're not going with the way of the world. We're not going the way of Sodom or the way of the church, but you've called us out of all denominations, all groups and denominations, even in the message itself, and called us unto yourself, a bride, chosen, elected, purified by the word and by the spirit. So we're very grateful tonight, Lord. Oh, Father, may you continue to speak with each one, deal with each heart, Lord. By the time we leave this place, Lord, may there be such a fire such a realization, such a revelation to know that the same God that was with the prophet and all those miraculous visitations of the living God is here right now. And you can visit each one that's here this evening in a glorious and special way. And we're so thankful for it, Lord. Be with us now in our fellowships after and bring us back tomorrow morning fresh to uh, uh, fill our cup again even further, Lord. Speak to us tomorrow and uh, the following days. Lord God, we're so thankful to be here. Now bless your dear people uh, as we go from here, but certainly not from your sweet presence. We ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. You may be seated now. And then the deacons will come, or the ushers, or whoever. They'll dismiss each row. We don't want to get a, 
too much of a jam up back there with the translation devices and so forth. So, brothers, if you would uh, begin the dismissal, that would be great. I thank God for all these musicians here. Aren't they amazing? You appreciate them? Amen. And uh, I, I really love this uh, string section we have here. They play so beautifully. It's really, really special. I so appreciate it. God bless you. You have come.